one of the really big challenges I think over my time on council is actually around how we attract people back back to Fremantle. At the Fremantle Council meeting, we actually talked about a destination marketing plan for Fremantle over the next four years, in which um, the aim is quite simply to bring visitors back to Fremantle, both from overseas, across state, interstate, and and locally around the metro area, um, to bring that life back into Fremantle to support support Fremantle big businesses. This is a key debate around how we use the differential rate which um, businesses within the CBD pay, how we best use that in, in a way to actually help those businesses. Council agreed um, with the officer recommendation for a destination marketing plan that will really bring a range of experts together to actually come up with a really coherent plan, one that will ultimately replace Fremantle's story and, um, and put Fremantle on a really strong path as we relaunch as King Square comes to completion late 2019, early, early 2020, to really bring people back to Fremantle and get that vibrancy back into town. Um, in doing so, that means that there won't be funding for the BID, the Business Improvement District, but there was a really strong acknowledgement of the good work that the BID had done, um, and Council will certainly continue some of those things, including key activities such as the, uh, the, the winter ice rink and, um, and also the great events like the long table dinner. So um, it, was, it was a tough debate, um, but I think we're actually now on a really good path for getting more people back to Fremantle more often. The proposed solar farm at the South Mineral Tips site was debated at the Fremantle Council meeting where we agreed to put the business plan out for advertising. Uh, there was a fair bit of discussion and certainly some community uh, feedback around making sure that if the solar farm was to happen that it would actually be safe for, for the community. Um, and the council was really clear, this is actually about, not only about sustainability, about creating what's going to be the biggest urban solar farm in Australia, but actually also making the site safer. Um, by provide, the solar farm will enable proper fencing, and also we will make sure that what happens to, to, um, when the solar farm is put in is that it touches the surface very lightly and actually is done very safely for residents. So um, for, I'm really excited about the solar farm proposal. The business plan is will, will now, go, now go out for advertising. We'd love community input on that, and that will come back to a future council meeting, um, and then that will ultimately, hopefully, see this project proceed later on this year. The unit one of J Shed down on Bathers Beach, below the Roundhouse, has been, fair to say, a pretty long-running debate within the Fremantle Council around how we better activate and utilise that amazing glass-fronted uh, space that, 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 and, and do it in a way that actually brings people back into that area and activates the whole area, connecting the fishing boat harbour all the way through Victoria Quay. It'd be fair to say that the previous iterations um, that were proposed to this of a very large venue, up to, up to 850 people, uh, were not supported by the Fremantle Council and not also supported by the West Australian Planning Commission. So, pleasingly, the proponents have come back with a smaller proposal, which will see this as a, a venue of up to 300 um, with a reduced footprint, um, reduced by, by, by 40%. I think what we've got now, and the Council supported this, is, is a proposal that I think meets the original intent of what we went out to, um, to the market with, um, to see a a great little venue that they can actually bring people all year round down into the arts precinct. And what we wanted to do then is actually to, by attracting people down into that area, is to, is to support the, the great range of artists that actually are working in and around that area as well. So um, that, that's been passed by the council. There's a little way to go yet in terms of approvals from state government bodies and the like, but hopefully we will finally see some action down in that part of the country. The South Atlanta Football Club have been here at Fremantle Oval for well over 100 years and at council this month we discussed actually how we can give them a license agreement that can give them confidence they're going to be here for the long term. So um, and I must say we came up with a really good agreement that I think is supporting a great club that, that's very much part of our community. Um, the now that the city of Fremantle has taken back control of the Oval from the Fremantle Dockers, it means that we can use it all year round for, for events and concerts and all those great kinds of things. But of course, importantly, it's also a, a football Oval. Um, so South Fremantle will be able to use that certainly during, during the, the football months, And but the city of Fremantle um, will be paying to maintain the Oval, which I think uh, it has happened for a long time, as well as helping South Fremantle out with, with some other revenue via, via sponsorship and car parking in the area. Um, I think it's a really good outcome and one that I'm really pleased we'll see South stay here and actually be part of a really exciting time down at Free Oval where you can see this whole precinct ultimately redeveloped and uh, very much part of our community.